A company founded by selling instant noodles just did what Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, and pretty much every other EV maker couldn't. I'll tell you the amazing story behind the brand and how they've managed to sneak up on us uh, in less than a year. But there will be challenges ahead, and that I will discuss with my guest, uh, Bloomberg's Detroit bureau chief, David Welch, who will be here in just a second. And of course, we'll take questions live from you, my live audience. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, where I reveal the truth behind the electric car headlines. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button that looks kind of like this uh, and the bell notification icon. Uh, so you don't miss anything moving forward. So let's talk about VinFast, a company that nobody really, at least here in the United States and Europe, knew about less than a year ago. Uh, let me know in the chat if you have. And if so, let me know if you would buy one of their two SUVs that are going on, on the market in, uh, in just a second, because this week they have delivered, I mean, delivered, a hundred of their uh, VF8 electric SUVs to their first customers in Vietnam. And they're just about to start the production of the first batch of 5,000 of those babies for the US and European markets. And they will be delivered to their customers here in Europe uh, before the end of the year. Uh, now, this is huge because, you know, VinFast did something that uh, no one else really making electric cars couldn't. Uh, and, you know, and of course we talk about, you know, all the, the specs, the range and the charging and the fart apps. But I think the most important thing for most of the consumers, especially in the last couple of years after, after COVID and the shortages and everything, is actually getting their damn cars on time and in some cases at all. And if if you notice that when VinFast announced that they're going to be making the cars, that they're going to be bringing it to the United States and Europe, they have actually followed their own timeline just literally down to a second. And that, I have to say, is impressive. Now, will there be three problems? Will there be production hell? Because it looks like a lot of companies, I mean, we've been talking about Lucid and, and Rivian like throughout the entire year, pretty much, with their production uh, hell, will this happen to uh, VinFast? We'll see. But here's the thing. Uh, the history of this brand is amazing. So Vin Group is actually the company uh, that owns uh, VinFast, was founded in 1993 in Ukraine. And they were selling dry foods there, including the instant noodles, which I think is like the best story ever. But, um, you know, and then they grew and they grew and grew. Now they own uh, real estates, resorts, schools, universities, hospitals, like pretty much half of Vietnam. And um, I went there a few months ago uh, because Vin Group invited a bunch of journalists to basically experience. And I think they just did it. I mean, one of the most lavish trips, by the way, I've ever been to. I think they did it just to show us how much money they have. I think that was the whole thing. Out of seven days we were there. Only one day was dedicated to the factory tour and the test drives. And I'll talk about it in just a second. But holy crap, this company has got a lot of money. Now, in 2017, a VinFast, uh, the car maker, was formed. And only within two years, they've delivered their first cars. Now, they've delivered gas cars because that's that's what they've been making all, all up until now. Uh, and then last year at the Los Angeles Auto Show, they've unveiled, um, which they now rebranded re into VF8 and VF9, a crossover and a full-size seven-seater uh, SUV. And then at CES, a couple of months later, they've unveiled all five of their models. And we'll talk about that. Uh, VF5 actually will only be made for uh, Europe and Asia, but that's fine. They've been designed by Pinion Farina, which is a major uh, a design house for some exotic brands like, I believe, Ferraris and so forth. And they currently have 65,000 reservations because they've opened those several months ago and people are really buying into it. We'll talk about it all, but let's talk about specs and most importantly, the amazing perks that this company gives to their customers, which will kind of blow your mind. But before that, a quick reminder that uh, this video is brought to you by Flow. Uh, if you're looking for one of the most elegant designs for your home charger, the Flow X5 
was made for you, featuring beautiful, sturdy, 100% aluminum casing. Get your exclusive $150 discount in the description of this video. And by new charge, guess what? The 220 outlet that powers your dryer can now be split to also power your EV with the help of the smart splitter from new charge, which will automatically switch back to your dryer while you're doing laundry. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. All right. Let's talk about some specs uh, of the uh, VFA and VF9. Now, those two uh, EVs are the ones that we're going to be mainly talking about because these are the two uh, EVs that are coming on the market uh, and, and have the deliveries now. So let's talk about the range really quickly. Um, I don't think there's official EPA range, but so we've kind of... Uh, uh, estimated it so vf8 to the crossover uh, and they have different trims obviously from 220 to 260 miles of uh, epa what we expect to be epa range now vf9 the bigger seven seater suv which i think is a lot of people are looking for uh 230 to 330 miles of range zero to 60 which i don't really think that matters but um vf8 5.3 to 5.8 seconds, and VF9 just has 6.3 seconds, which, you know, I got to say, uh, uh, better than my um, ID4. Oh, boy. Uh, do I have a video for you about my ID4 in the next few weeks? I am really getting frustrated with the damn thing, including just possibly selling it. But we'll talk about it maybe some other time, right? Now, let's talk about pricing. Now, I got to tell you, with all of the coverage that I've done about VinFast, uh, and you probably noticed when a new automaker comes on the market, there's nothing but positive things to say about them, right? Because shiny prototypes and all the promises and dreams and hugs, and it's all great. But then they go in production and boom, we got Rivian and Lucid that just completely started, you know, not delivering the promises, screwing their customers and so forth. So uh, it is, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a mess. So but one thing that I was very critical of is the pricing that they released several months ago. Um, it was complicated. Uh, it, it wouldn't, uh, basically, you couldn't buy the entire car. You had to buy the car and then lease the battery separately. And then the leasing of the battery was, you know, uh, you know, up to a certain mileage, I think up to 300 miles, you pay this much and then so much per mile, or you can buy an unlimited. And, and basically my, my head started to hurt and, and so did everyone else's. But to their credit, They've actually fixed that, and they fixed it this week when they've uh, announced the deliveries. And so what's going to happen now, There will be you will be able to buy the car if you want, but also you will be able to buy the car and lease the battery separately. And for that, there will be just one plan for the unlimited amount of miles. I actually think this is great. People who want to own everything will be able to buy it. People who are really skeptical of the battery going back bad and having to replace it and then you... They can lease that battery, which is no longer your problem. It's going to be VinFast's problem. So if your battery is being – anything that's happening to your battery, you will be able to just give it back to them. They'll give you a new battery because it's a lease, right? All right. So let's talk about pricing. Uh, for VF8, the smaller crossover is $57,000, including the batteries, battery included. Uh, or you can pay $42,000 or so and, they, and then pay $169 per month uh to subscribe to your battery uh, to me simple and quite good for both sets of people uh who are looking to buy an electric vehicle L let me know in in of course in the live chat and the comment section if you're watching the replay uh, uh which one you would prefer whether it would be the just buying the whole thing or leasing the battery. i probably would absolutely lease the battery separately i think that's a great idea okay vf9 that's coming uh, uh also by the end of the year seventy six thousand dollars outright and then uh, uh, $57,000, $57,500 uh, plus $219 per month in the battery subscription. Now, the battery carries a lifetime warranty with no maintenance cost, which is kind of insane. This is where insanity starts with the perks. Uh, and when the pack degrades below 70% of usability, uh, VinFast will replace it. And I think this is what um, uh, this is. This is. Uh, uh, where 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 is a huge benefit to, to the to the customers? Now, uh, Chris here in the chat says, "Why would you rent the battery uh, if you lease?" So uh, let me explain. So you 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 have an option to you can buy the whole thing, right? But you also have an option of um, buying just the car 
and leasing the battery. And the reason you, some people will want to do that, including myself, is because the battery is no longer your problem, right? They're completely 100% taking care of this. Uh, if it needs to be replaced, it will be replaced. Um, if they decide to change, uh, you know, maybe cell suppliers and come up with a be- you know better battery, you can you can do that as well. So to me, eh, it makes a little bit more sense. But for some people, won't they will maybe lease the entire car? So they will be leasing the car and they will be leasing the battery. But I think the peace of mind that comes with it is actually a pretty good, Chris. So hopefully that answers your question. But now let's talk about more insane perks that this car has uh first if you reserved either one of them between um may 31st i think that's where the reservations have opened and uh september 30th which i've been told hasn't happened yet uh, so if you reserve it before september 30th you will get one of the two options here one is uh you'll get a free uh home charger and about 1500 dollars, i think in credit to install it so essentially you get a free home charger and an installation and everything and you're good to go or you can get three years unlimited uh charging from electrify america that's here in the united states i believe there's a similar similar deal in europe which again i think i love my id force electrify america free charging i'm actually you know how i've been telling you guys that i've been thinking about moving outside of the united states what uh i've now been thinking maybe driving through the United States first and maybe finding a new home and just checking out the country. And guess what? I'm going to be able to do it without without spending a dime on my fuel because it's free. So uh, that's pretty good. The only other cars that uh, have this three-year limited deal with Electrify America, I believe only the cars that have that cost more than $100,000. So uh, it, it is an amazing deal. Now, also on top of that, VinFast have has a, a, a 10 year uh, warranty, which I think is the longest warranty in the industry right now. Uh, on top of that, if you reserved it um, when they just uh, opened the reservations, you would get three thousand dollar voucher, which essentially you're getting three thousand dollars off, and then you get an NFT of uh, uh, from VinFast, and I think that those have been already given out. And on top of that, you get a seven day four person stay at one of the uh, Vin Group's resorts. Remember I said Vin Vin Group owns like resorts and everything and we've stayed in like one of the best resorts there in Vietnam on private islands. It's insane. So that voucher is worth about $5,000 which by the way in Vietnam things are very cheap. I remember staying at one of their private islands and I believe I looked up how much that room is and it was only like 100 US dollars per day at least when we were uh, there in spring. So $5,000 will get you an amazing trip. You will have to pay, I guess, for your um, airline tickets and stuff like that. But I got to tell you guys, one of the best trips uh, I've ever had. So, um, all right. So l- l- let's talk about a little bit about, uh, you know, who's running this company, right? Now, uh, first of all, the global CEO is Tui Lei, um, which I met several times and she's been on my show. Um, this is footage is from when I lost my voice, couldn't talk. And the questions have had to be asked behind the camera by my assistant. So, and this is us and one of their private islands in, uh, in, in Vietnam, but both. And, and, and so, and this is, um, their U S CEO, Van, uh, Van An, uh, Uwing, uh, both women, as you notice, and I, and I think that's pretty awesome, but also I got to tell you, they are awesome leaders and, they really were amazing hosts for us. I mean, we did so many fun things with them. They were part of our group, right? Whether it's a karaoke or dancing or great, or just going, it, it, they, they were great. And I got to tell you, whenever you meet people who run these companies, you can tell a lot by how this company is going to run uh, and how successful it's going to be. So I, I kudos to both of them. And um, uh, they've been uh, with the company for, for a long time now and uh, absolutely uh, great choices. Now, before Tui, LA was uh, the CEO, the global CEO. They actually had one for only a few months, uh, Michael Loscheller. Uh, now, he ended up quitting after several months for personal reasons, but you probably recognize him because he now is a president of Nikola Motors and a newly announced CEO of Nikola Motors. I'm hoping to have him on my show in the next few months as he takes the reins of the new CEO. Uh, and before that, he was CEO of Opal, which not quite sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but if you've ever been to Europe, you know, Opals are everywhere. Um, so I thought that was quite an interesting uh, a story and a leadership. Now, a lot of people, you know, um, 
uh, a lot of people uh, say, well, listen, first of all, listen, uh, this is the Vietnamese car brand. We didn't even know they made cars in Vietnam. And how, why are you so excited about them? Because, uh, you know, they've never made any cars before. So why do you think they are going to be able to just, boom, do this like this? Well, so there's several things I got to tell you. First of all, they have been making cars for several years now, gas cars. But nevertheless, when I visited their factory, that wasn't a newly built factory. That was a factory that was in full operations. As a matter of fact, they've sold almost 100,000 cars at this point. And when you're in Vietnam, you see VinFast cars everywhere. And we have went through like four or five different cities. So they are everywhere, everywhere. So, um, and uh, now, then of course people say, oh, okay, fine, they made gas cars, but they've never made electric cars. Well, wrong again. They've actually delivered their first electric cars uh, last year. Uh, and these were the E34s. These are the electric cars that are only going to be made for the Vietnamese market. But nevertheless, they've been making them for now almost a year. So, I you know, and now, like I said, they've delivered the first uh, 100 and the, the 5,000 uh, unit batch uh, is in the works now. And it looks like they will deliver before the end of the year, which is, you know, quite insane. But check this out. This is the first brand, the first, I guess you would call it manu legacy manufacturing brand because they've been making gas cars for several years now. They're the first brand that, 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 that are going to stop making gas cars altogether. And you're probably wondering, yeah, when's that going to happen? 2030, 2025? I don't know. No, this is going to happen in two months. By the end of this year, they will be done making gas cars. How awesome is this? I absolutely love this. Now, let's talk about their factory. Now, I visited their factory in Vietnam, and that was great. I mean, I, kudos to them. Uh, for uh, for for doing that, and so one more thing that I also wanted to talk about is that you know they are actually announced that they're going to be building one uh, here in North Carolina. Uh, they will begin the construction pretty much at the end of this year, so really any minute now, and we'll start the production in July of 2024. Now with this company, I have a feeling we can at least for now trust their um, their timeline. So. Looks like, you know, less than two years. And now it becomes even more um, important because with the new EV tax credit, which, by the way, it looks like they said they're going to be giving that credit whether or not the U.S. government is actually going to give that credit. I must have read it wrong because I just read it like yesterday night and I was like, oh, wow, that is like almost too good to be true. But it looks like it's true. Uh, and then... Um, they um, so 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 it looks like they will manufacture maybe even and definitely put together the battery packs, which will qualify them for seventy five hundred dollar credit because they're built here in the U.S. Um, and uh, the maximum capacity is going to be one hundred fifty thousand units per year. Now, by the way, I have actually test drove the VF eight when I was in uh, in Vietnam, and not gonna lie, that prototype it was impressive that they had a prototype. Uh, only a few months after the unveiling, but it wasn't hundred percent ready. I got to tell you, like my impressions of that test drive was just like, oh, it exists and it drives. But there were quite a few issues with the software. There were quite a few issues with uh, maybe a lag, and uh, yeah, that 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 was my oh my god, I'm scared, Paige. Um, and uh, but overall, I actually liked. Uh, the way it drove, at least at that time, uh, the interior and um, the exterior. I especially like the back of both of those. The front, you know, make your own judgment. Uh, and I certainly have a, a, a frunk that I, a lot of people just love having the frunk. Um, they do. It's very comfortable, by the way, too. Uh, all right. So another thing that uh, there I am, very comfortable. It's, 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 it's a great experience always. And people a lot of times go like, what are you doing? And they go like, oh, I get it. Anyway, let's talk about something else before I bring in uh, David. Um, they are now, of, uh, so they, they're opening 50 uh, stores throughout Europe. Um, and half of them are actually going into Germany. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, I don't know why, but, but, Nevertheless, they've already put a few of them in there, but they also already opened six stores here in the United States. You're watching the video that I took uh, five minutes away from me uh, in uh, Berkeley, California. And I got to tell you, not only it's a, you know, quite an interesting and nice and clean showroom, but the staff, right? I came in 
Thank God they didn't know who I was because I'm not very popular. But they started asking them questions as just a regular uh, consumer. And I got to tell you, they had better answers than their US PR department um, uh, about pricing. At that time, the pricing was still complicated, right? And yet they were able to walk me through it. And I got to tell you, kudos to them because uh, they've done an excellent job. Whenever you can do a better job than your PR department, uh, you're um, you're definitely uh, you're definitely doing a, a good job. Um, without further ado, let me bring in uh, David, who is uh, Bloomberg's uh, Detroit bureau chief. David, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And um, all right, so let's talk about VinFast. I'm not gonna lie; I am overly excited about this brand. I ha- I think I have I my. Can tell. <laughs> huh? I can tell. Yes, I, I, but as always, you know, uh, these brands, they look great uh, with the prototypes and all of the, the big events and trips. And then once they go in production, then we get Rivian and Lucid, who all of a sudden goes like, oh, wait, we got to make these? That's going to be a problem. Uh, what's your take on what they have done so far uh, and what challenges they might have? Yeah, good question. Look, we, we had uh, here in Detroit, we had their top... U.S. sales guy come in and kind of you know pitch a lot of journalists here for about an hour on this. Um, look, they have a long hill to climb here. You know, the vehicle doesn't look bad. I'm, I'm reading the chat here. Some of the, actually, I think the majority of people watching our show uh, don't like the looks of it. But look, if it's an SUV, crossover SUVs from 30, 40 yards away, they kind of all look the same until you get up and see the grill and that sort of thing. But, but it's reasonably attractive. And, and, you know, and it offers pretty good range. So, you know, there are some things to like here, but just look at the history of the companies that have started up. Uh, Rivian really, it took a, a decade until they got real funding and they worked from luxury cars, sports cars, different things to finally go and pick up an SUV, but it took about a decade. Tesla's been at this really since 02 or 03 before they finally got it going. Lucid has been at it less time, but um, they're also not as far along as those other two. And then a lot of these other SPAC companies are really struggling. This is difficult to do. So you have a company that's been making vehicles, electric vehicles, for just you know a few years and gasoline-powered, or actually just recently, and gasoline-powered vehicles for just a few years. It's not a lot of history to really master automaking. And, and, and now that doesn't mean they're going to have quality issues. I don't want to condemn anybody without driving their vehicle and giving them a chance. But look, GM had battery fires. A lot of people don't like to talk about it, but Tesla has battery fires too. Um, I don't mind talking about it at all. I I don't about these fires at all because yeah, but you're right most people fancy trips if you do that's that's, yeah, that's kind of gets a free pass on that and and you know they, they shouldn't but look the relatively speaking battery fires are pretty rare but they happen it's still a quality issue obviously a safety issue and toyota you know no one in the world is better at making automobiles in terms of quality and reliability than toyota it's just and, you know the koreans have caught up caught up to them pretty nicely but Toyota is a great manufacturer, and they're having wheels coming off the uh, the, the BZX4. I mean, you know, it, clearly making electric vehicles, this shift to new drive train and new platforms and all that is causing headaches, even for those who are very good at this and have been doing it for 100 years. So you take a company that's been doing it a few years, new platform. They have 6,000 employees. They're in the process of hiring 8,000 more. They have a plant in Vietnam. They're building one in North Carolina. A lot of things can go wrong when you're adding new plants, new assembly lines, and training new workers. You know, a decade ago, Nissan, actually about 15 years ago, they had all new Altima sedan, all new minivan, all new pickup truck in an all new plant in Mississippi. And they had tons of quality problems because everything was new. The workers, the training, the machines that were doing it, the supply base down there. 30,000 parts have to go into the car and you got to put them on, uh, all of them on right. And, you know, I, I, so I think that's a challenge. The other thing is they've raised $6 billion dollars. They do have the financial. So hold on a second, David. Let's let's just take one at a time here. So uh, sure. let's talk about manufacturing. So I've been pretty harsh on Tesla and specifically this year Rivian and uh, Lucid about you know uh, crapping out on manufacturing uh, like big time. And I understand this is going to be a challenge, but um, you know the reason I'm a little bit looking a little bit differently on this is because Vinfast has been making cars. And when I was in Vietnam, it wasn't just I've been told they were making cars. I saw. Fast cars everywhere in every city I went. 
So, you know, and then I visited the factory. So I did see the cars and they have already several years of, of experience of making cars, keeping their wheels off, by the way. Uh, so they're not in the same position with, you know, Rivian or, or Lucid. Uh, and they've been making electric cars since last December when they've delivered their first batch of E34s. So does that at all calculate into sort of uh, any type of concerns about them going the same route as Lucid and Rivian because they are kind of quite a bit ahead of them. They do. You make it, it's a valid point. They have a longer runway of having built vehicles. It's not a super long one. It's a few years, uh, whereas Rivian and Lucid really just getting started uh, the past, what, like 12, 18 months. Uh, now, Rivian and Lucid have, like, they've hired a lot of industry veterans. They don't have a bunch of pikers, you know, doing the designing and engineering work. But when you're training new employees, you're retooling plants, it's always pretty tough. Um, but, you know, what we're talking about, even before we mentioned Lucid and Rivian, are, are problems that Toyota, General Motors, uh, have had getting electric vehicles out. Tesla did, too. Uh, Tesla had all kinds of problems with the Model 3, ton, even worse with probably with Model X. And, uh, and they were really the first ones to get this going. So, you know, VinFast is going to have to prove that they can do this. They're also going to have to sell the cars. Um, you know, what does that brand mean in the U.S.? And they're looking at American consumers as being uh, a big buyer. Why is somebody going to go to a VinFast dealer or probably a direct-to-consumer uh, to retailer and buy these cars? I'm not saying they won't, but it's, it's a big question. We asked their head of sales that question, and he didn't really have a clear answer on what the brand imaging was. They, they weren't going to come over here and tout that they were this great Vietnamese brand. Um, they were going to kind of just tell that they were an electric brand, but it, they, they, you know, the, the market position isn't really clear either. It, and, and that brings me to a question from the audience of, from Rahan right now. Let's see if either one of us can answer it. Uh, uh, he says, where's VinFast on auto? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. The other one. What's VinFast's unique selling point? Um, let me take it's, a shot. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll answer you and Ron at the same time. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I, I think uh, there will be some people who just want a, something new. I remember when I went after Tesla in 2012 and, and, and I wanted to buy Tesla, I was just so tired of BMWs and Mercedes is putting 20-year-old technology in their cars and, 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 and selling it for $80,000. Sure. So there will be some people saying, you know, I, I want to drive something different. That's number one. Number two, I do have to say that they did quite a good job on selling things around the car. So for example, just the three years of Electrify America unlimited uh, charging is a big deal uh, to a lot of people. Like I'm surprised how many people in my apartment complex where I live here in Silicon Valley, even though we have 20 dedicated charging spots, majority of them are not even taken by electric car drivers. Our electric car drivers, uh, majority of them charge somewhere else and have regular spots. So that actually is a big deal. Also, I got to say, a free trip, essentially, free stay in Vietnam is a big deal. They are giving you like $3,000 off. The warranty, a uh, limited warranty for the battery, uh, especially if you're leasing it, and the longest warranty in the industry for now of 10 years, right? They really, when I talked to uh, to Lee, their, to Lee their, their CEO, she was very clear saying, listen, we know we're new. We're, we're not kidding ourselves. We understand people will be skeptical. So we wanted to make sure that we put all of these perks. So when you're buying the car, you're getting so many, so, so much more for it. But at the same time, we wanted to guarantee everything that, you know, we stand for, the, you know, the quality that we're going to deliver. And so we're putting all these warranties, one stacking one over the other and the commitment we're going to have to customers. I know I sound like an infomercial, but um, to me, uh, that does get me excited. However, whether or not they're going to actually be able to sell, well, 65,000 reservations, that looks all right. That looks pretty decent. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on what I just said? Well, first of all, you must have had a great time on this trip because you brought up this perk a couple of times. <laughs> so, um, this is okay. the best trip I've ever taken. I got to tell you, like, they really made sure that we know how freaking rich this brand is. So there's ever, ever any questions for them running out of money, I would just show the footage of us hanging out on their private islands and, and doing these crazy things on this. I, it, it, yeah, so they made sure that we know they have money. I got to tell you that for sure. I think they'd be better off setting up service bays in the U.S. So if anyone does buy a lot of their cars, they'll be able to fix them rather than 
you know, resorts. They, on they the do islands. have a network. They do have a network that they're building, just like everybody else. But you know, we, we, that we'll still have to see what kind of service they're providing, yeah. how you know mobile it is, and so forth. Yeah, look, these you know gimmicks like that. I don't think that's going to turn many consumers' heads. It, it's you know, I was thinking the same thing that someone else in the chat was that it sort of sounds like, you know, when someone tries to sell you a timeshare, um, you know, if they're going to give an extended warranty, that is a really good way into this. It makes me wonder why they want to offer a, a, a battery for lease. I, I, don't, I don't get that part of it. I don't, I don't think American consumers are going to want that. That seems to be answer to a question nobody was asking. You have had battery fires, but that would be covered under warranty. So why would you need to lease the battery? I mean, we've had Teslas out there on the road for 10 years and, and people aren't you know, seeing them crap out or anything like that. Um, there's a pretty active market for used Teslas. I, I just, I, I don't understand that go to market proposition. And, and I don't Are understand- Are you talking what, about what, the battery lease? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand how it works. I just don't understand why anybody would want to do that. And I, I, well, it's not a big deal because you don't have to, you can buy the whole vehicle, but it's an expensive vehicle. Is the other point. Yeah. Would you, would you buy that over a Hyundai or a Kia? I would. Well, I am not a big fan of Kia EV6. Honestly, I think it's one of the worst uh, electric cars, not in terms of specs, but like for consumers, as far as getting into it and actually driving it every day. Uh, I'm, I'm really not big on EV6, uh, though a lot of people do like it. But um, so I'm the pricing is high, right? The pricing is high. I think that's why they weren't even going to sell it uh, outright at first. Um, with the, with the battery leasing, like I said, I might actually go for something like that, but I have to tell you, a lot of people are still saying who don't know anything about the electric vehicles, their concerns are about battery crapping out at some point and them having to replace 10 or $20,000 worth of battery. And they're really scared of that. So I think for those people, the option of leasing where the battery is not their problem at all and not having to actually pay uh, as much money. Uh, may be attractive, uh, so I don't think this uh, this option was awful if it was the only, when it was the only choice. Now that it's an option, I think it's a great idea. It, it could work for some. I it, I just don't think it really moves the needle for them. They have to prove that they can build a quality vehicle, a reliable vehicle, that it gets the range that they advertise. Now, we only have a few minutes left, but I would love to have you back on and talk about GM because I, I think we might disagree on that one in terms of uh, probably leadership, probably the speed and quality. But so let's leave that conversation for another day, which I would like to have. Uh, but, but you did write a book, uh, Charging Ahead, specifically about that. Um, in just like maybe a minute, give us a quick snippet and we'll put a link to the book because I wanted to address one more comment that I see here in the live chat. Yeah, sure. Look, GM's this company that people love to hate. And over the past eight years, Mary Barra has really, uh, she's, she's transformed this company from one that did everything in every country across the globe, this big empire that Alfred Sloan built starting in the 20s. And she tore it down, made it into a record profitable company, and now she's trying to catch Tesla and EVs. Now, someone here, does he have, no, Nigel, I do not invest in General Motors. I'm not even sure I really like the company, but I think what Mary Barra has done is one of the biggest uh, transformations in business we've seen since Jack Welch tore down General Electric and turned it into something. What she's done is turn it into, taken it from a money loser, and um, they've got a shot at it. I will hold my response to that for the next time when we talk about this, because I know that originally we wanted to talk about that until VinFast thing came in. Uh, okay, there's a couple of minutes left, but let me address a very interesting comment, and maybe you can comment on this as well. Um, why can I not click on things today? Um, uh, let's see if this is the comment that I meant to put in. Oh, yeah. So from Richard, how your OTA updates on your ID4? So, Richard, I'm going to give you a bit of a preview of what I'm going to probably do in the next two or three weeks. And I'm, I'm probably going to lose tens of thousands of dollars on potential Volkswagen uh, advertising because I've also had advertised with me before. Uh, but I got to tell you, I was really, really excited about my ID4. I knew I was going to be a guinea pig, just like with Tesla. And I looked the other way with a bunch of software issues that they had. I brought it up more and more in the last year or so, but now that they we had zero 
uh, over the year updates and the car is not only just annoying me with the same problems that are now just over time annoyed the hell out of me uh, and i'll give you one example in a second but things are actually getting worse the car go you know the the screen goes blank it disconnects my uh, android auto it overheats my phone um, I have addressed these issues with Volkswagen directly, and essentially they've done absolutely nothing about it for me and everybody else. Um, so I'll give you a quick example. Uh, if you go around the car, it kind of knows where you're at and it unlocks the doors, right? So if I'm at the charging port, which is the right, right next to the right pass, uh, back passenger door, it sees me there, it unlocks the passenger door. However, even though the charging port is like four inches away, it does not unlock the charging port. I cannot yank my plug out of there. So I have to dig into my pocket, get my fob, and then actually click on the car to fully unlock. So I can, uh, 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 it has become the worst part of my time in my garage. Uh, and I can now have a list of 10 or 20 issues that just beyond unacceptable, not a single o o OTA at all. Um, and honestly, I am, if I'm not moving out of the country, uh, I'm probably going to sell this car if I can get a hold of another EV relatively easily. So I am really had enough with my ID4. Um, David, you know, we have about a minute. If you have anything to add to this, uh, do let us know. Well, um, two things. One, uh, if, if people want to read my book on GM and either love it or hate it and send me compliments or hate mail, that's great. It's chargingaheadbook.com. Believe me, all the warts of GM are in this book too, but I think they do have a shot here. Um, so that's my plug for the book. So Alex, you don't like your Tesla anymore. You don't like your ID4. Um, you've been kind of taking shots at Rivian and, and, and Lucid. Whose EV are you gonna buy? That's a good question that I'm going to have to think about, right? Uh, I gotta say the one car that hasn't had pretty much any major problems is the Audi e-tron actually, uh, which would be my top choice for now, but I will uh, I will probably have to think about it. Right now, I'm just annoyed, and I will just have to find time to figure out if you know uh, I'm going to wait for the o OTA update, or I'm just going to get rid of the car and, and get something else, or just continue basically, you know, suffering with this. So I will I will have to think about it. But you're right, I have um, you know. But the thing is, I've given the chances to these new EVs. Uh, and, and they kind of, um, they've, uh, they haven't turned out to be what I want. So maybe I need to adjust my own expectations at this point, but, uh, it's, uh, it's a conversation for the another day, which I will have with, with my audience for sure. But for now, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to have you back to talk about, uh, GM. Uh, and, uh, I, I've, 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 uh, we, we should do this again soon for sure. Yeah, this, this is great. By the way, I love the chat here. One person says you're going to get a Cadillac lyric, and another person says you're going to buy a horse. You know, I think both of them are actually <laughs> quite close to the truth. I, I might, I might just do, just do that. At least you're going to buy uh, a horse. I, I'll get free charging with both. Uh, all right, David, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will see you next time for sure. Uh, for the rest of you guys, thank you for uh, hanging out with me. As always, uh, this is a, a, a best part of my week usually. Uh, and um, uh, don't forget, uh, we will repost this uh, in a sort of a contracted version, a very watchable wa version. And uh, join me next Wednesday at 1 o'clock Pacific time to participate in our live stream all right looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged <laughs>